No, Luxon Finn, she is not good. But we're gonna have an entire video about her anyway, because this series is all about equality, and even some of the worst blades in the game deserve to have their own guide, even if they weren't equal in the game itself. Shield Hammers are a pretty bad weapon class in general, and Fitch doesn't really have much going for her to prevent her weapon class from holding her back. And in fact, many of her qualities just make her worse than most common Shield Hammers and not worth using in a majority of situations. But this is Xenoblade 2, and if you want to use Awful Blades, then you still can. Just don't complain if it doesn't work out super well. In this video, we're going to be discussing all of the pros and cons of Finch usage, and how you can attempt to use her the most effectively. As per usual, if you enjoy this type of content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, and look forward to all of the future guides, both good and bad, because it does help out so much. So Finch is a Shield Hammer, as already mentioned, the fourth weapon of this class that we've talked about so far. Shield Hammers have a mediocre auto attack stat, just barely reaching above 1300 with the most optimal core chip, but do have the highest block rate which can max out at 58%. They have a terrible critical hit rate that maxes out at only 10%, which severely hampers their damage potential. Finch in particular has defenses of 20% physical and 30% ether, which is decent enough for a hammer and makes her tankier on the ether side. For stat mods, she actually comes with a 15% agility mod, which is a bit counterintuitive to Shield Hammer's face tanking, but agility can still be a good stat and might be something you want to take advantage of if you're using Finch. Her cooldown is 3, which is among the lowest in the game, because why wouldn't it be? For Driver, I'm going to use her on Zeke just to show off Zeke's hammer kit, since Morai was using the previous three videos for Shield Hammers, and Zeke is an okay option for hammers as well. Let's take a look at Finch's skill tree. Finch's first skill is Surprise! This will increase damage from a surprise attack by 100% at level 1, rising up to 200% at level 5. I can't think of a worse possible damage increase skill. So for 1, this will never work on story enemies or challenge mode since you can't sneak up on them at all. And for 2, this works on exactly one attack the entire battle if you manage to actually sneak up behind an enemy to use this, and then it's completely worthless after that. I don't think you're going to get much out of a Finch surprise attack either. This skill is terrible even if you can take advantage of it, and is going to do absolutely nothing for Finch in any situation. Finch's second skill is Doesn't Ring a Bell. This skill has a 30% chance to reset an enemy art cooldown when a special connects, and that chance rises to 50% at level 5. Man, I really love RNG activation skills like this. Only having a 50% chance of working on special is already not great, but even if it does activate, a majority of the time it's not going to make a noticeable difference. Most enemies have short art cooldowns anyway, so they can use them frequently throughout the battle, and even for longer cooldown arts, it's only a minor chance that it actually hits those arts instead of a different art, and it still may not have the biggest impact on a fight. Stopping offensive abilities from enemies usually won't ever help with any kind of speed, and most of the time you'll have plenty of ways around dangerous enemy attacks, making this not really the most useful. However, there is one use for this that's actually pretty good you'd never expect, and is the sole reason I think Finch is at least better than Electra and Dromark but we'll talk about that later. Finch's final skill is, did I do that? This skill has a 10% chance to not deplete recharge of an art or special when used, rising up to a 20% chance at level 5. A 20% chance to let you use another bad art again when art recharges the thing, or use a special again instantly. Sure, I guess, but not really practically useful. I suppose this does give you a chance at spamming level 4 specials if you're very lucky, but let's be honest, this skill still sucks. 20% RNG chance sucks and will make this skill worthless more often than not. A shield hammer that has skills that will almost never have any impact on a battle really sucks and makes Finch feel pretty bad as a blade. Not to mention she is going to have a ridiculously tough job trying to get aggro with no skills that help with that at all. How can you function as a tank with no damage or no aggro skills to try to get aggro? You're basically just in this weapon class to take up space and do nothing useful. It's difficult to call Finch a good blade at all based off that. But skills aren't the only things about blades. Maybe she secretly has amazing specials. Let's take a look. Finch's level 1 is Blast of Fresh Air. This is a single hit, ether based special that is actually not that slow. It's not super fast, but it is still a fast special. Certainly beats out Electra in the bad shield hammer department. And it also has an area of effect surrounding it, making it decent against multiple enemies. And it actually has a slightly above average damage ratio, starting at 315 at level 1, rising to 470 at level 5, and 504 at max affinity. Its bonus effect is completely useless since it increases affinity by 100, but you should probably be at max affinity anyway if you're using Hunter's Chemistry and all that. Guess it can help if Finch isn't your primary blade, but honestly just pick a different option in that case. Finch's level 2 is Whoopsie Crazy. This is a 3-hit physical-based special that is single target and honestly pretty slow. 
Interestingly enough, it has a 25% critical hit modifier for that extra 2% critical hit rate, and it also comes with another above average damage ratio of 448 level 1, 600 level 5, and 638 at max affinity. This isn't enough to make this special good or make Finch worth using, but at least it's something. The bonus effect is increasing aggro, which again isn't useful over damage increases, but I guess it can help if you're trying to get aggro on Finch. Still not very good, and her level 2 as a whole is still not very spectacular. Finch's level 3 special is Wake Up Whirl. This is probably the special I'd recommend using the most. It's only single hit, but it's at least average in speed, and it has a good area of effect radius as well as a useful bonus effect of increasing damage to toppled enemies. Getting topples isn't too hard, and combined with, again, an above average damage ratio of 575 at level 1, 740 at level 5, and 782 at max affinity, the special can actually be pretty useful to try to squeeze any damage out of Finch that you can. It may not be much, but it's at least something, and might be worth charging up if you plan to use Finch. And if you get lucky, you can even use the special twice in a row. Finch's level 4 special is Perfect Storm. Because Finch cannot have nice things, this is one of the only level 4 specials without any bonus effect at all. Guess it isn't quite perfect in that respect. Still, level 4 specials have their own benefits like freezing driver combo timers and free invincibility, and Finch can actually spam level 4 specials if you're lucky enough, so I guess she has that going for her. Only other thing of note is that the damage ratio is 1000, making it okay, but I guess it's not really going to outdamage her level 3s on topples. All around, her specials are nothing spectacular, and along with her battle skills, makes her not very good at all. For setup, I'm using the Tachyon chip because you may as well try to get aggro on her, and this gives her the best mix of stats also in addition to the bonus effect of the 25% extra aggro. Dilaton is useless without aggro, even if you do get an extra 20% block rate, so I don't really recommend it. As if Finch wasn't already bad enough, she also only gets a single aux core slot, just so she could be even worse than she already is. And in this singular slot, I am running Affinity Max Attack, so I can at least try to do something with her damage. For accessories, we've got a burst symbol here so the fights aren't painfully slow and we can use some strong allies to take out HP faster than we would otherwise. And since I'm using Finch on Zeke, I can run a loincloth for that nice 85% damage boost. Finch needs all the help she can get there. As a final item, Alexandrite will restore health from auto attacks so Finch can have some decent self-sustain as a tank if you aren't running a healer or something. If you are, then just run more damage here. Dauntless Boots are also an option if you want to invest in more agility, since she does have the agility modifier. Otherwise, damage to get aggro is probably going to be key. For pouch items, Art Recharge is nice to get more arts and specials, and try to take advantage of that 20% chance to recharge your arts instantly as much as possible, and specials. Zeke Hammer animations are slower than Morag, so you can actually infinitely cancel with Finch on him, but the damage potential still isn't nearly as high. With all that done, let's take a look at how to use Finch practically. So, first things first, let's fight our favorite super boss control group, Tyranitite and Kuradil. So we got Zeke using the hammer this time, you're going to notice that his animations are a bit slower than Morag, but you're going to be able to see that I actually could cancel arts into themselves with him, and you also have a launch art instead of a topple art. Because of this, we're going to need someone else to provide the topple, I have Mithra on topple duty here, and I can also launch if I want to, and we also have Tora who can also launch additionally, in case the launch art is too slow, which can be a problem sometimes. And ideally, I would use Finch in a way where you can use as many level 3 and 4 specials as possible. Maybe to try to get that double stack fusion combo like I'm trying to do right here, just to get that 20% activation. But again, relying on RNG doesn't really work that well most of the time, so I was unable to get the activation, which was unfortunate. Luckily, Finch has some pretty good defenses and block rates, so even though that Rampage Train didn't even do half of our health, so that's pretty nice. The Alexandrite, if I auto-attack, is going to restore my health pretty effectively. I was able to get over 2,000 health back pretty quickly there, which is pretty nice. And now we're going to look to be setting up Cyclone, we have a good opportunity to do that. Since I have Cutie Pie on Earth Element, if I use level 4 again, I'm actually going to be able to instantly use that level 3 and get a double stack fusion combo if I truly wish to use that in, for a chain attack or anything like that. So right now I'm just canceling my arch. You're able to see I'm able to do that pretty effectively. I was going to wait for that topple, but I was actually in the launch animation, uh, art animation as soon as that topple landed. So we ended up getting an instant launch here. So I don't level 4 quite yet. We're just going to keep art spamming with Finch because we're able to do that thanks to did I do that and everything else. So that's all we're really doing for now. That one's not going to expire anytime soon thanks to all this extra driver combo duration from these driver combos we're doing really quickly to him. So we got plenty of time to use the Cyclone here. 
At this point, I'm waiting for him to enrage so we can block Ultra Annihilation Flare with the level 4 we've got built up here. So that's going to be the goal at this point in time. So he's actually enraged now. He's going to use Ultimate and Annihilation Flare pretty much right after this. But we're going to be able to use Cutie Pie Sandstorm to block this now that we've got him set up properly. And we're going to be able to get that extra fusion combo damage here. Rex tries to topple here, but it doesn't work because he's immune to topple because of the Ultra Annihilation Flare giving him immunity to basically all reactions. The Ultra Annihilation Flare goes off. We no effect it, so we don't take any damage for anything. We get a lot of additional damage, and then I use level 4 after that. And we can actually set up a Photon here on this break to get a decent damage over time effect because of the fact that we were able to use it while the break was still active thanks to using Finch's level 4 again which we had gotten back from earlier from the Did I Do That. So even though we don't have fusion combo on this chain attack, we've got a damage over time effect ticking of 40,000, which is actually pretty good, because Mithra's not set up for, like, massive damage currently, and we're able to get the kill here. So, yeah, that's just one of the things you can do. Just fish for the Did I Do That's on your level 4 and level 3 specials and try to use them to your advantage. Doesn't Ring a Bells can activate pretty frequently in chain attacks with Finch, so if you're not killing an enemy from a chain attack, you can actually reset pretty much all their art cooldowns, which can actually be an okay way to use that, but for the most part, it's not really anything you're going to want to be relying on. Especially because you're going to need multiple orbs to get multiple specials in a chain attack anyway. So, secondly, we're going to just kind of show off Finch in a more challenging environment with more enemies and everything like that. The Goliathosaurus, this is of course Dino Drama, it's going to be on normal mode. And this time around, we're going to be able to show off Finch's AoE with her specials here, which is going to be pretty useful. And we're also going to be able to see the potential, quote-unquote, of Finch in a bit more dangerous of a fight. I know he's technically not high, high, as high level as Tyranno Titan Fur at all, but the challenge overall is, is more challenging than fighting just one enemy overall. So I hit the level 3, and now we're going to be able to use the AoE from Finch's level 3 to hit all these enemies and kill them all in one hit, because Finch is just that powerful. We're able to get a nice 100 and, like, over 100,000 damage with that special. That's pretty impressive for Finch. I know it's only a single hit, but still, you know, that's that's pretty impressive for Finch. We're proud of Finch here. So that's another thing Finch does have. She has decent AoE on that level 3 special, which is pretty nice. It can do a decent amount of damage to multiple enemies if you want to, which I think is pretty cool. And now our goal is to take advantage of some more AoE by setting up a orb on the Goliath Soros, because Mithras level 2 can hit all the enemies at one time, with, and we're going to be able to get a little bit extra damage with Finch's AoE as well, which will do a decent amount of damage to these Mammoth enemies, which have a lot of health normally. I wanted to wait for the fusion combo, so we waited for the break here, so we're going to be able to get a double stack fusion combo here with the Sandstorm, which is going to be really nice. It would have been also additionally nice if Finch got a level 4 back, because we would have been able to set up a triple stack fusion combo thanks to that, but unfortunately that is not always how the world works. We're not always that lucky. Actually, it looks like we only get a single stack anyway. It looks like Rex squeezed in a topple there, but that's okay. Because that's still going to be pretty useful. The topple's going to give us some extra damage anyway, which is going to almost make up the difference that we would have gotten from the double stack anyway. Finch actually hit damage cap there. We have a critical symbol on one of our allies, so Finch can actually hit damage cap here with that special. Really proud of her. That's better than some of the blades we've seen so far, so I guess that's one good thing. And all around, the Goliath Soros is going to be ended this time, I think. So, without crit, she's actually able to hit over 600,000 on these three hits. I know we have like an extra 1,100 damage multiplier, but that's still pretty impressive for her, I would say. With the crit, she was almost damage capping, so good on her. Good on Finch for that. I'm, I'm proud of her here. Rex has built up more supportive here, so he's not actually doing that much damage at all. Finch was actually doing more on that level 2 than Mithra was, which is really funny. But Mithra's pretty much set up entirely for support. There's no damage on her at all. She has the critical symbol, the burst symbol, and everything like that just to boost our cutie pie damage here more than anything so he can carry the main portion of this damage, or she in this case, but Tora is the he. Anyway, we're able to get these mammoths already under half health, which is a good thing because they're pretty dangerous on their own as well. You can see right here these enemies aren't super dangerous, but Finch isn't really able to get aggro all that often either, which is unfortunate. We're going to use level 4 to finish this enemy off here. And overall, you can kind of see Finch is still able to function pretty well here. She could be a bit better if she had more damage and we were able to take out these challenges a little bit quicker, but Finch isn't really the epitome of speed or anything like that, especially when you need, like, some extra support just to boost one of your character's damage, I would say. Terex enemies are nothing special. You can try to charge a level 1 to deal with them with the AoE, but they don't have much health. They can probably go down even faster than that, like you can see here. 
The challenge is basically over at this point. The final phase is just one little small Oopa enemy, just I don't know why it's there, but it is there. But I did mention there was one really important use for Doesn't Ring a Bell for Finch, and we're about to get into that. So, I mentioned earlier it's not very useful for offensive abilities, but some abilities aren't always offensive abilities. In fact, there's one ability on one very specific challenge that is a huge pain. So, Bringer of Chaos, Serious Showdown, you fight against Jin and Malos. Malos has this ability called Monado Armor, it cuts all damage to both Jin and Malos for, by 80% for 30 seconds while it is active. That is a huge amount of damage reduction and can make the challenge take quite a long time because your damage is just cut so much. But, if you have Finch and can manage to use a very quick special on Malos and you can hit all the required RNG, the 50% plus the RNG needed to hit that specific art, you can actually stop Malos from using Monado Armor, and you can finish this challenge significantly faster. For a long time, this was the strategy to get the record on this challenge, but it has since been replaced with a more driver combo challenge that is also a bit RNG reliant to get all the luck needed for that. But we will never forget the times when Finch actually ended up being very useful to us. So thank you, Finch, for having one small niche use for a period of time. We will never forget you, and you know what? You can be the third worst blade in the game instead of the absolute worst. Thank you, Finch, for all of that you've done. I think that's going to cover it for this video, so I hope you guys managed to learn something from this video. And if you really want to use Finch, learn how to use her the most effectively in whatever situation you choose to use Finch in. I still don't think Finch is very good, but you can make anyone work in this game, so that is one of the things I love about Xenoblade 2, and I hope you love as well. If you enjoyed this guide, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much, and I can continue to make wonderful guides for you in the future. Please look forward to all of my future content, and with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and have a blessed day.